Hey guys and welcome to my channel Sheikah's VSG Life. This is your first time watching my channel. I had vertical sleeve gastrectomy on December 20th, 2017 at Brandon Regional Surgery Center with Dr. Kiar Chavda. Actually referred to me from one of my support groups that I went to back in um, mid-2017 and a girl on Facebook actually recommended him as well. So now that you know about me, let's get started on what this video is actually about. So a lot of folks who have had vertical sleeve gastrectomy or who are getting ready to have VSG, they have a ton of questions about what to expect. Those things run the gamut of, will I actually lose weight? Will I lose my appetite? Will my sex dry? Will it be covered by my insurance? One of the biggest questions and probably the biggest worry of any woman who's getting the surgery, because statistically it's usually women getting it, is hair loss. Hair loss is talked about a lot in this community. So I just wanted to talk to you guys um, about my experience with hair loss, being that I am about um, five and a half months post-op VSG. I'm not gonna sit here and sugarcoat it and say that I haven't had any hair loss. According to um, surgeons and several studies done, hair loss after gastric sleeve surgery starts in month three to month six. It typically takes two to three months to clear up with some patients experiencing hair loss from six to nine months. Now, the hair loss can be minimal, just a few shedding here and there, or it can be catastrophic with some women and men reporting um, complete baldness, hair coming out in chunks, hair coming out when they take a shower, even when they touch their hair. Doctors recommend making sure that you're taking the amount of biotin prescribed by your surgeon, that you are getting your protein in especially, you are drinking water, and you're trying to stay low stress. really hard to tell someone to stay low stress when they're losing their their hair. If you're anything like me, and if you've been watching my videos for a while, you can tell that I love, I love doing my hair. I love having my hair different ways. And honestly, the thought of losing hair did not bother me that much. I felt like I was one of the relatively safe ones because I hadn't really lost any hair. So um, I want to say maybe month two, I began to notice a little more shedding. Um, I wear a lot of weaves, so um, wigs, um, sew-ins, braids, crochet like I currently have. But I like to be as low managed as possible with my hair because it prevents breakage. When you are natural like me, and I have been natural for about eight years now, you really want to leave your hair alone. So I want to get into my experience with hair loss since I've gotten this surgery. I started noticing hair loss in my third month of surgery. I started noticing just some little breakage here and there, some areas in my hair that weren't as long as others. Right before surgery, in an effort to not stress about losing hair, I cut about eight inches off of my hair. So my hair was about here. And when I got surgery, my hair was about here. The first couple of months after surgery, I noticed growth. My hair started growing in length. But the biggest thing I noticed is the thickness started decreasing, which kind of worried me, but didn't worry me in such a way that it stressed me out. Met with my doctor for my three month post-op appointment. He asked me if I had experienced any hair loss and I said I had some minimal shedding, but it could be because I had, um, I had braids in when I got my surgery or to have crochet. I had crochet in when I got my surgery and due to just the physical pain and everything involved with the surgery, I didn't take my hair down for about two months. So I just kind of attribute it to just me losing hair because my hair had been in braids for like three months. But then I hit month five about two weeks ago and um, I went to take my hair down out of I can't remember what style it was. I think it might have been a sew-in. And I typically, when you're natural, you start to comb your hair from the ends and you work your way up. That way you don't have knots and you're not just pulling your hair out. Well, I'm combing out just a tiny section of my hair, maybe just this section over here. And I had a pile of hair in my hands and it just fit into the middle of my palm, right? And then I moved to the front. And then I had another pile that fit into the middle of my palm. And every section I combed out, there was a pile after a pile after a pile. I was getting ready to wash my hair. So 
I'm sitting on my couch. I just finished combing my hair out. I put my hair in a ponytail and then I went to the bathroom to turn on the shower because I was going to co-wash my hair. I walked past the mirror and I could see my scalp. I was looking at my actual scalp, which I had probably never seen before besides parting my hair. So I want to show you guys in a minute what the amount of hair looked like that I had in my hand and then what my scalp looked like as well. Um, I actually didn't lose any hair from the back of my head or the middle of my head. I didn't lose a lot of length, but I did lose my edges. Guys, VSG has not been good to my edges. So I'm going to insert some pictures in in just a second of the amount of hair I lost and what my edges look like after I had it. Now, the first picture I'm going to show you guys is what my edges looked like about three weeks ago. And then the second picture is what they look like tonight, right before I did this. Um, so here they go. I still wasn't stressed out about it because it's hair and it grows back and I can't really speak for anybody else. I can only speak from a black woman's perspective. We are very good at hiding um, what our hair looks like. So I wanted to be real with you guys. I wanted to show you guys what it looked like. So I'm going to come a little closer and show you guys what it looks like under my crochet. Now, anyone who's ever done crochet, you typically you have to do braids back or you can do braids in any design that you want. And... That way, you're not really touching your hair, but you have hair everywhere. Um, for the last year, I've been doing um, a braidless crochet because, honestly, I just get tired of braiding. And my hair is super nappy and my fingers get all cut up. So I put my hair in ponytails and then I crochet through that. So I'll show you guys what the edges of my hair looks like right now. So here is what the edge of my hair looks like. And this is, honestly, it's like three weeks of growth. There's barely any hair there. My hair actually starts right here. So if I pull it up right here, there's my hair. But this is where all the breakage is. And it's on both sides. It's a little worse on my left side than it is on my right side. And... I don't know why the fact that it's the edges of my hair bothers me so much. If it was like the middle or the back or, but the edge of my hair. And I hardly ever show the edges of my hair. So I don't know why it bothered me so much. But just being able to see my scalp. And this is after a couple of weeks of growth again. And I'll tell you guys what I'm doing to make it grow. But uh, it was stressful. I pulled my hair into a ponytail and there was nothing there to grab. So right now I'm kind of, I mean, you wouldn't be able to tell from the way my hair is done, but I'm kind of stuck with what I can do with my hair right now. And it's just hair, right? There are people who are losing hair for other reasons and not to say that they're not important, but I didn't realize how important my hair was to me. I'm not going to lie. I freaked out. Okay, I freaked the fuck out. If there's any part of my hair that was always thick and always longer, it was my edges. I always measured my hair from my edges. I didn't pay attention to anywhere else. I'd grab my edge and be like, oh, okay, my hair's down here, and then I'd move on. But there's, I can't even grip anything there. Like, I had my hair in a style a couple of weeks ago, and I tried to do, like, baby hairs, and I don't have any or not enough to really show. I showed my fiance what it looked like. I sent him a picture today. And he was supportive, but he told me, yeah, it looks really bad. And I appreciate the honesty. I do. But that's, that's what it looks like right now. And I can talk about all the good things that have come from this surgery. I've lost 72 pounds in five months. I've gained freedom back, um, mobility, 
My blood pressure is finally in a healthy range. I'm not pre-diabetic. I can run a mile in nine minutes. I can lift weights. I can fit into clothes in my closet I've been holding for years. But as soon as I saw that I was losing that much hair, all my confidence went out the window. And I wish this was like a fun video. I wish I was giving you guys some information that would make you see the light at the end of the tunnel. But this, this is the result. And it's not all bad. It's not all bad. You know, I get to rock these cute ass hairstyles, you know. I get to make sure I cover this forehead with some sort of bang, you know. But I want to be real with you guys for a second. I could go completely bald right now. Completely bald. And it's something I'm willing to sacrifice for this new lease on life. They make wigs for everybody. I'm wearing my fiance's shirt. I'm wearing his shirt. Not only am I wearing his shirt, it's a medium, yo. If you guys have ever seen my fiance, he's a buff dude, he wears two small shirts. I've been wanting to fit his shirts for like four years and I can finally fit them. I can sit in this chair right now and have space on either side of me. I can cross my legs. I can walk up the stairs and skip a step. Every day I come home, I skip a step on my way up the stairs. I can take long strides. I can sit cross-legged. I can sit on the floor straight up with nothing supporting my back. I can do so much and my hair does not prevent me from doing any of those things. All that fucking weight prevented me from doing those things. So if you're worried about losing hair, it doesn't happen to everybody. It just happened to me. And that's okay. Do I always get all my protein in? No. There are some days where I'll only drink maybe 20 ounces of water. But all the things, all the bumps in the road, all the struggle I've been through to get me to this point where I'm coming up on six months post-op and I never thought this time would come. I never thought I would see the other side, the post-op side. It's worth losing some edges. It's hair. It'll grow back. And it has grown back. For two weeks, I've been doing something that I'm going to show you guys in another video. Um, it's an, an interesting thing I've been doing. If you do want to know what it is, leave a comment below. I'll, I'll put it in the comments. I want to do a whole video on it. But I want to do a video on it after I've had some more experience with it. So it'll probably be my seventh month post-op video. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, if you want to follow me on Instagram, please follow me. It's the same name as my YouTube channel. It is Sheikah's VSG Life. Um, I'll be doing uh, what I eat in a week next week. So that'll be my video for next week. And I'm going to go, I'm going to do my complete meal prep. I may be out of town soon. Um, I think I'm going to Phoenix for a week. And then I have a trip planned for Sean's um, birthday. So I might have some travel weight loss videos coming up. Who knows? Um, but again, thank you guys so much for watching. And remember, hair does not define you. If you need some tips on how to do some hair, I can send you some messages to some YouTubers who taught me how to do my hair. Remember why you are doing this. What you want out of it. That should be the most important thing. And love yourself, bald, long hair, thin hair, gray hair, whatever. You're beautiful.